let me talk about doubt for a second. Um, there is there is a doubt, and a doubt comes in such a way that it could literally paralyze us. Okay, but let me just say something. When you put Jesus dead center in the middle of doubt, you create an answer in doubt. Now, a lot of times I think believers and we've been taught to fear the word of doubt. And we feared it to where we become scared of it. But let me say this. <clears throat> when you look at Peter, for an example, when he was sinking, and Jesus says, why did you doubt? Right? Well, the idea was here is I want you to understand this. Peter had a moment where he had a thought outside of, you know, his present. He got caught up, which we probably all would have, and he began to sink, right? <clears throat> and But I want you to notice who was there to catch him. Who was there to catch him in, his middle, in the middle of his doubt? Jesus was, right? Now think about this. Thomas, he says, unless I put my fingers in it, unless I can see it, unless I can touch it, I'm not going to believe. Now right in the middle of Thomas in all of his, in that doubt, who showed up? Jesus did. Now, I want you to really think about every time Jesus talked about someone who had little faith or no faith. When Jesus spoke that, who was there? Jesus was there. Why am I saying this? Because I think a lot of times we fear doubt. When actuality, I really want you to take this to the Holy Spirit. I think doubt is really the discovery of faith. And, and without doubt, it's hard to discover faith, right? <clears throat> because we don't know fully what faith looks like. We assume what faith looks like, but it's through an experience that we can have to be able to experience faith that makes faith become more real to us, right? <clears throat> so like Thomas experienced Jesus showing up in the middle of his doubt, you know? But the thing was, is Jesus wasn't scared of Thomas's doubt. It didn't scare Jesus off. He didn't run away because, <gasps> Thomas is fe or fearing, Thomas is doubting, oh, I can't show up because I can't be around doubt. No, he showed up in the middle of it. You know, when you feel like you're doubting in somewhere in your life, which everyone does, some place, some way, some shape, some form, everybody doubts in something. There's just something we're all growing through. I want you to be confident in this one thing, that Jesus always shows up in doubt. Now, that that's not taking away i'm not taking away the magic that happens in faith and you know the 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 amazing things that take place in faith because faith is beautiful and things happen amazing in faith and i don't want to take away from that but what i do want to do is help you in the process of growing to live in that place of faith that you can be secure in the god in you in such a way that you're growing and learning and Jesus can sympathize with you. He understands our weakness in growing, right? He understands that, hey, we're overcoming certain mental thoughts and concepts and ideas and past experience and hurts and mental perspectives and, and all this different stuff that's ever happened to us in our memories. We're overcoming all this stuff. We're, we're juggling it. We're discovering. We're like Thomas going, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I have to see it. Like, you know, he's in the middle of it. And Jesus showed up in the middle of his heated thought process and him vocalizing, you know, that he wasn't, can't, couldn't believe. Like, I just can't do it. Like, help me. And see, in the middle of that, Jesus showed up. And he'll show up for you in the middle of your doubt. Don't think that your doubt scares God. Don't think your doubt scares Jesus. Jesus will always show up in the middle of doubt. I'm convinced that Jesus really wants to prove himself to you. <laughs> like, uh, we get taught in Christianity, Jesus doesn't got to prove nothing. Well, okay, I get the concept of what you're saying, but let's just think about this. A good father, a good husband, is always trying to please his wife. Why? Is because he loves her. A good father is always pleasing their children and taking care of them because they love them. Right? And how much more would Jesus do? You know, and if one day your wife feels like, mm, I don't feel like, I don't feel like my husband really cares about me or I don't, or your son and daughter goes, you know, I don't know. My dad's so busy. He just never has time for me. And I just want to, I mean, when you hear that as a father, what do you do? You, you, you gravitate to that. 
You want to spend time with them. You want to help them. You want them to discover, hey, I do love you. You know, let's spend a little more time together. Let's hang out a little bit. You'll show up and do stuff right in the middle of that. So that's what Jesus, I feel like he does. He isn't scared of your doubt. Right. And again, I'm not taking away the amazingness and, and how powerful faith is. But what I'm saying in the process of discovering that he's not scared of your doubt. So don't you be scared of your doubts. Understand this. The places of your doubt is the place you're really discovering faith in you. Right. And so faith is powerful. Doubt. I look at it like this and you may agree or disagree with it, but I look at doubt and fear as an asset as crazy as that sounds because i'm always trying to think of it from the realities of the spirit i look at it as an asset that's helping me discover all i have right that's about to manifest it see fear and doubt fear a lot of times is the unexpected and the unknown so it's got to be known right that you expect it and once you expect it and you know it you don't fear it as much right you might get some butterflies, but that's just the unknown. That's not really fear, right? Doubt is the same concept. Like, you just don't know. Just don't don't line up. How does that make sense? Like, everything I've ever been taught in my life is just not lining up. And Jesus shows up and lines it up. And you're like, oh, my gosh. I never thought that was possible. You know, a lot of times when I help people pray for the sick and they lay hands on the sick and I tell them, you know how your thoughts are always thinking, well, what if it doesn't happen? You know, um, what if they don't get healed? I'm going to make God look bad. Your thoughts think like that. Well, that's just your logical, intellectual mind and your feelings and your emotions saying, teach me, train me. But the fact that you have your hands on them, the fact that you stepped out and engaged them really shows that you really are in faith. You really are in faith, right? It's just your mind wanting to be trained. So you're training it now. Now, after you pray for it and they go, wow, what did you do? Your mind's like... Yeah, what did I do? You go, it's Jesus. And you're like, oh my gosh, that really just happened, right? And inside, inside you get excited and it builds confidence in you, right? Because you just trained your intellectual mind to come into a kiss of agreement with the Spirit of God in you, right? So the thing is, is sometimes we're thinking those things are doubt and it's really just untrained, unrenewed, unknown, right? And, and, and so we're actually giving an experience. So it's use and exercise that you train your senses. This is what meat eaters do. They, by use and exercise, train their senses to be skilled in the word of righteousness, the reference point. They're aligning themselves up that they have the right discernment from the Spirit of God. So I just want to encourage you in that 